All right, this is your brother Aisha Yarn coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstones to learn his truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing his word through the four corners of the earth with the truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Akwat that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled 2024, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. All right. 2024 the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble now I got a spice to do this lesson because the beloved Apostle Tahar he always gives these years a certain theme he always labels it with something you know to ignite us within the spirit to get us prepared for what is to come and to get us you know on board and to strengthen us man all right so uh, he's been doing this since 2016 and this year for 2024, he's labeled this year the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. All right. So what I'm going to do before I begin to speak more is I'm going to play just the first two minutes of this video. So you walk in here what he had to say about the situation. And then after that, you know, we're going to grab a few scriptures. So let me go ahead and play this first two minutes real fast and then we'll get into it. Let me go ahead and widen the screen. All right. Shalom, giving all praise to Yahweh, Shalom, 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 as I do every year since 2016, I think 2016 was deemed the uh, the year to push. We all been pushing. So this year, 2024, is the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble, and that's uh, Jeremiah 31st seven. What I did was, I took Jeremiah 30 verse 7, the commentary, and this came up, which they were half, right? Prophetic passage, Jeremiah 30 verse 7, is a prophecy which will be fulfilled at the second coming of the Messiah. Christ, the word is Messiah in the Hebrew, Ma Mashiach. At the end of the last half of Daniel 7, 70th week which they went off on Daniel 70th week which is in Daniel 9 took place already that was uh, the fulfillment of uh, the Messiah coming on the scene in uh, 70 AD at the end of the 3.5 year period the great tribulation see chart for synon synonyms at which time the Messiah establishes his literal earthly millennial kingdom, right, which is for Israel. So anyway, um, all right. So you heard him say it. He labeled this year the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. All right. And the first thing that popped in my mind when I heard this uh, last night was you really do have to have big faith to pray and hope for something like this. <laughs> All right. To literally say and wake up and be like, man, I hope Jacob's trouble is this year. This is one of the things that lets you know that the Most High has the Holy Spirit upon you and he's dealing with you, man. Because we already know what Jacob's trouble consists of. Jacob's trouble is not a time of fun at all. All right. Jacob's trouble is a time of great judgment, death, famine, martial law, FEMA camps, the MOTB, the microchip, the return of our Lord Yahweh Shai, who's coming back with the sword, the chariots showing themselves full blown, shooting the lasers at people and melting people. This is what's coming. That's what Jacob's trouble is. All right. And so for you, to wake up in the morning and pray that this is the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. That's letting you know that your mind is in the right place. 
because nobody in the world will ever wake up and hope that the downfall of America would be this year. We literally just came out of a holiday where people are doing their rituals, they're doing their, uh, they're, they're setting their goals for the year and it's all just quote unquote happy things. They wanna get right in the gym, they wanna start eating better, they wanna plan their weddings, they wanna finally go on vacation, they wanna get a better job, they want to make sure they're not in the same spot they were at this time, around this time, next year. All right? That's what they're thinking about. They're not hoping that the economy crashes. They're not hoping that all hell breaks loose. They're not thinking about that, man. But we are. And the reason why we're thinking like that is because we know what comes after Jacob's trouble. Like it says in Ezra, 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So we're living at the end of Esau's age, his society, his, his run, his rulership. And in order for us to get to the kingdom, this place got to go down. And that's going to be the way that we show our faith. Because as we all know, at the end of the day, that's what gets us out of here is our faith, man. Keeping the law being a super duper Israelite, putting fringes on all your t-shirts, all of that stupid shit, man, that's not gonna get you saved. When all hell breaks loose, which is Jacob's trouble, when that happens, that's when the Lord is gonna keep an eye on all of us. He's gonna test every single one of us, man. So yes, we are praying that this is the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. We want to get up out of here, man. We don't want to have to wake up another day worrying about going to work, dealing with these people, dealing with this society, getting sick. All right, because we're in a time of being sick. I'm still recovering from being sick. Still got the itchy throat and everything, man. Still in these bodies. Still got to deal with this hell. We want out. So, yes, we are praying for Jacob's trouble, man. I'm going to get Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And as you can see, it says the time of the end. And it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince was standing for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. So a time like never before is getting ready to happen. A time that's going to be so bad, Michael, the, 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 uh, head angel under Yahweh Shai, all right, he's going to have to show himself to stop this madness. But the thing is, as we just read, it says, and at that time, like people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. So the angels are going to have two tasks. One, to save the elect. Two, to bring judgment on everybody else. All right. Verse 2, it says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right, the elect which consists of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the first fruits of the kingdom. You're going to be the ones that wake up to everlasting life because you're going to have faith in a time of trouble that's coming. And you're going to keep that faith and call on Yahweh and Yahweh Shai all the way until the Lord returns. And you're going to be the ones that's going to have everlasting life because you're going to live forever. All right. You're going to be the first ones to get on the chariots. And it says to some the shame and everlasting contempt, the two thirds, because first of all, two thirds of our people have to die here because they did not want to acknowledge Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. They did not pray for Jacob's trouble. They're hoping and praying that America continues because they have plans. All right, so two thirds of our own people are going to have to be put to death and they're going to come back in the kingdom through the elect as the children. All right, they're going to be to shame and everlasting contempt, meaning just for a very long time, because at the end of the day, we all know that two thirds of our people, when they do come back in the kingdom, they're not going to be in shame and everlasting contempt in the kingdom for a long time. All right, the Most High is not going to put that shame on them forever because they're gonna enjoy the kingdom as well, all right? But when they come back, they're gonna know 
that they were, they were one of the ones that didn't make it, all right? So this is what we're trying to avoid. We don't want to be the ones that come back in the kingdom with our heads down, man. We want to be one of the ones that the Most High looked at and it was like, you know what? They are worthy enough for salvation. So yeah, man, we praying for Jacob's trouble, man. We praying to get the fuck up out of here. And we hope that this is the year. And like I said, you got this is why the scriptures say <laughs> we are uh, uh, preachers that, that, that teach foolishness. All right? To go out there and tell the people we hope the downfall of America happens. We hope the economy crashes. We hope World War III starts. We hope, you know, Esau brings his great wrath finally and so forth and so on, man. People look at us like we stupid. They'd be like, you all want this to happen? Yes, we do. Because we understand, like I said earlier, what comes afterwards. We ain't got time for this shit, man. We don't want this. Let's get James... So you, you, like I said, you really just got to think about that, man. How much are you in this truth? Just say that out loud, man. I hope this is the year of Jacob's trouble. And think about that, man. <laughs> Let's see how much faith everybody got, man. This is James chapter 5, verse 7. It says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman, husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Yahweh Shai is on his way, man. He's right around the corner. He's getting ready to show himself. And he's going to come in, yeah, as we all know, he's coming back angry. The day of the Lord is nothing pretty. Verse 9, it says, Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard the, of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay be nay, or your nay nay, Salakia, lest you fall into condemnation, all right? So everything that you got going on in life that's giving you problems, man, put that shit to the side. If you got certain problems with brothers, you work that shit out, put that shit to the side. Because at the end of the day, we all out here working and grinding for the house of David. We're all out here uh, working to help wake up the elect. And we're also out there for our own salvation, man. Because at the end of the day, this is, it is this is every man for himself. Because when Jacob's trouble begins, you may not be around brothers, man. You may not be around brothers. Something may happen while you may be at work. You could be at work thinking everything is cool. You just over here trying to get the day over with. Next thing you know, something major go down. Then you got to be on a run. You might want to hurry up and go home or try to, or try to grab a few things. You may not be able to do it. You may be like, oh, shit, it's that time, man. These are the times that we're coming into, all right? So we got to take the prophets of old as an example of the ones who stood firmly for the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. The prophets of old, the great men of the Lord, they went through certain things and they kept the faith. When death faced them and looked them dead in the eye, they did not fold, they did not flinch. They endured. That's why it says, behold, we count them happy. Why? Because they made it and they became friends of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai because they kept patience. And that's exactly what we're going to need in these times that's coming, man. That's why Isaiah 33 and 6, that's going to come out a lot. All right? Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of thy time. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. When Jacob's trouble begins, we're going to have the fear upon us. Lord willing, we're going to be thinking about these scriptures in order for us to stay stable. All right? So be patient. Anything that you got going on, man up, man. Clean up your act. Do what you need to do because these are the times that we're coming into. If this is the year of Jacob's trouble, then man, get, right, get your house in order, man. That's a video I just did the other day. All the brothers are saying it, man. 
get your house in order pray like never before fast even more because if this is the year it's gonna be that time man we ain't gonna be going out to the highways and the byways we ain't gonna be uploading no videos man real shit getting ready to go down let's get zephaniah let's get zephaniah chapter one let's go to verse oh that spell it wrong I think I did. All right, it's chapter nine, chapter one, and then let's go to verse um fourteen. And it says, "The great day of the Lord is near. It is near, and hasted greatly. It's speeding up, man. It's approaching very fast. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath." A day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord Yahweh, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung all right neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the lord's wrath but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy but he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land the most is getting ready to bring great judgment on those gutter rats that's over there claiming to be us the most is getting ready to bring great judgment on the edomites that's over here in america the most is getting ready to bring great judgment on our own, on his own people that don't want to listen to him, that chose him um, or them, all right? The day of the Lord is what? Great wrath. When you bring wrath upon somebody, what do you think of? When you hear that word wrath, what's the first thing you think of? Whatever it is, let's imagine the Most High doing that in his form and fashion, man. A day of trouble and distress, a day of wait wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Whenever you look at movies or TV shows or whatever, and they always show the day where the evil is getting ready to happen, everything turns dark. You hear those evil laughs. People die, people get attacked, people scream. That's the day of the Lord, man. And like I said in verse 14, it says, it is near and hasted greatly. The most is approaching very fast, man. Sonic super speed, Superman speed, even, even faster than that. Because we're talking about the power that's getting ready to bring judgment on the earth, man. So yeah, <laughs> trouble. This is what's coming. This is what we're praying that we don't get in the mix of. This is what we're praying that we can get saved out of it, man. Let's get Amos chapter 5. And we'll start at verse 18. And it says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. There's a lot of you all out there that's praying to Jesus Praying to whatever God that you believe is out there to save you. And you praying that you uh, get up out of here. There's a lot of people that know that they're Israelites. <laughs> There's a lot of people that know that they're Israelites. And they're praying to who? There's still a, a lot of Israelites out there that's praying to Christ. Praying to Jesus. There's a lot of people out there that's praying to Yah. They're praying to Yeshua. They're praying to Yahweh. And these are people that know that they're Israelites, but they're still going off, man. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. What end is it for you? What end is it for you, man? All of us should be afraid right now, man. All of us. We don't know if we're going to make it or not. This is why we're supposed to be going hard every single day so we can make our calling and election sure, right? We ain't got time for no bullshit, man. Because this is the, the way that it's going to be. Verse 19, it says, As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. You're going to be going from situation to situation when Jacob's trouble begins, man. 
Imagine you you in the street, you train you ran away from a lion, and you go inside and you know go away, and you go into another area, go to another part of the forest or whatever you at. You like cool, I got away from him. You got a breather. Then you turn around, there's a bear. Now you got to get away from his ass. Then you find a house, lock the door, and you're like, all right, ain't nobody in here. I'm safe. I can breathe again. And you lean against the wall because you're trying to catch some, get some air. And then the next thing you know, a serpent right there and it bit your ass. Judgment just came upon you, man. You're going to be going from situation to situation to situation. Two thirds of our people are going to have to be going through this, man. They be going from situation to situation and hoping that they get away from it and they ain't going to be able to get away from it, man. Just for the simple fact that they didn't repent. <laughs> Verse 20, it says, Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? The day of the Lord is going to be something scary, man. Like the scriptures say, the Mosai is a terrible God. He's a terrible power. He has demon-like ways. He creates good and he creates evil. All right. Verse 21, it says, I hate, I despise your feast days. I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. We really just had, literally just had New Year's Eve last night. And everybody was out there celebrating, man. Everybody. Except the hopeful we let. We set our ass down. We already know this not the, the new year. The new year begins on the first day of spring, man. When everything's supposed to be starting new, right? Right now, everything is dead. And certain things, you know, it's not even fully in rest the way that it should be because winter really wasn't winter this year like that. Yeah, it got cold. It got cold. But winter was, was warm as hell this year. Christmas on Christmas here in Illinois. It uh it, it reached to like 65 degrees. And the reason being is because of Esau. Esau was destroying the earth, man. So when spring finally uh comes in this year, the trees and the plants and everything like that, they're not gonna be able to operate correctly because they didn't get the correct rest that they needed. But anyway, but you know, our people celebrating New Year's anyway. And like I said, it's funny because a lot of our people, I've just seen videos with a lot of our people who post these videos on TikTok and they'll tell you, yeah, man, actually the new year is the first day of spring, but guess what they still did yesterday anyway, because <laughs> Jake loved a party. But anyway, verse 22, it says, though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows, but let judgment run down its waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. All right? This is what's getting ready to happen. The judgment of Yahweh by Shem All right? He's getting ready to let that run as a mighty stream. Just think about a waterfall. A waterfall always flows. Big pools of waters is always going 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 that's how the judgment of the most high is going to be when he finally gives the orders to the angels to yahweh shai put the, the spirit upon esau to be the devil that he is those judgments are going to be something crazy man and apostle gabar just did a video last night talking about that as well 2024 is going to be a year of great judgments a lot of you all that's not taking this truth seriously and not trying to upgrade, not trying to actually do what's right by Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, you out there teaching wrong, butchering the scriptures, not bettering yourself, not growing within the spirit, not being in this truth and sincerity. A lot of people are going to be are going to start being put on front street, man. We're going to see people that. <laughs> We already know, you know, certain people, when we see them going off, we hope they repent. We hope they change from their ways, right? But this year may be the year where certain people are going to be made an example out of, and we're going to hear about it and see it. Going to wake up one day, and somebody that's a major name in the Israelite world may pop up on your, your YouTube feed or whatever, saying that he or she passed away. And we're going to be like, damn. And it's going to happen more than once. 
I'm not saying to that same person. I'm just saying more examples are going to happen to different people. This is how close we are to the time of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. The Most High is getting ready to usher in a kingdom, man. The kingdom is on the way. And in order for his kingdom to be set up, this place got to go. And that goes along with wicked Israelites. Let's get one last scripture, then we'll close it out. Let's get Revelation chapter 21, and we're going to start at verse 1. Because this is, what, this is what we're waiting for. You see the caption, the new heaven and earth. The new heaven and earth. This is what comes after Jacob's trouble. Verse 1, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. America is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. That's going to end Jacob's trouble. Once the missiles hit, that's it. Because the, the, the chariots will be full-blown. Yahweh is going to appear in one large chariot, all right? Because the elect is going to get beamed up in one large chariot. That chariot is going to be big enough to fit millions of Israelites in it, all right? So that's what's getting ready to happen. Verse 2, it says, Nigh John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, the elect. Because the elect are going to get beamed up in the chariots, and then once they get inside the chariots, they're going to have those new bodies. And we're going to be in perfection, because the law is going to be written in our inward parts, man. And we're going to land somewhere in the wilderness, all right? And Yahweh Shai is going to give the orders. He's going to lay down the law. And we're going to see what happens after that. All right? Because you got to remember, we are the bride to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. He compared us to a, a comely, uh, heavenly woman. All right? Verse 3, it says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Mosai is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and the Mosai himself shall be with them and be their power. All right, because ultimately the Mosai is just dealing with men. Of course, he's going to save a lot of the women that's, uh, you know, from you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. He's going to save a lot of women because the, the scriptures speak about the elect lady, and the scriptures say that women are going to be saved because of childbearing. All right. And he's going to have love for the women. He's going to change them up as well. He's going to put them back in their right minds. But ultimately, the Most High is dealing with men. And the reason being is because we're the ones who teaches. We're the ones who's supposed to go out there and preach. We're the ones who's able to bring back our nation, even if all of our women didn't exist. That's how powerful a man is. And the scriptures tell you that a man is going to be as precious, as fine and precious gold in the last days, man. A man is finally going to get his respect and honor that he deserves. All right. But that's all uh, another subject for another time. Let's keep reading. Verse four, it says, and the most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall be there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. This world that we currently live in is getting ready to pass away. And it's going to wipe away all of these things that brings us down within the spirit. These things are going to be heard of no more for us. All right. This is what we're fighting for. Jacob's trouble, when that happens, yes, we're going to be in the midst of it. And it's going to be something else. But we already know what comes after that, which is this. No more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. We understand that this is what comes along with it after it's over. And this is what we want. So we can finally live a life of peace and pleasure and order and righteousness. Verse five, it says, and he sat there and he sat and he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said it to me, right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said it to me, it is done. I am alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give it to him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his power, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in a lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, which is the nuclear destruction that's getting ready to happen to America, aka Babylon the Great. All right? The fearful, the unbelieving, 
and the abominable and more and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars everybody that sins and love to live in sin and then change from their ways all right that didn't repent you wicked israelites the ones that literally heard this truth and you still didn't do anything about it you're gonna have to have your part in a lake that burns with fire which is america being destroyed by thermonuclear destruction from world war three that's gonna be your fate if you didn't die before then because the most is getting ready to get rid of a lot of his people throughout what jacob's trouble all right so this is the times that we coming into man you got to prepare yourself for this man we've been saying it for a long time that this ain't no game we're out here preaching about it. We're prophesying about it. We're telling you what's getting ready to happen. <clears throat> it's like it. It's only up to you to make the right decisions, man. All right? Make the right decisions and get yourself in order. Because like I said, if this is the year, you see titled it, titled it the hopeful year, right? We're hoping that this is the year. This may be the year where everything builds up. So it can finally go down next year or this can be the year where things happen quickly and it happens this year. Either way, man, we're seconds away from this time of life happening, man. So get right. Repent. Repent daily. Examine yourself and prove to yourself that you are in the faith. All right. So I hope this is edifying. So with that, I'm going to say call Halayim Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the great millstones I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth with their truth and sincerity. And shalom to the aqua that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratazah, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala, keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.